krīze. Šķiet, ka šis termins jau sen visiem aknās sēž. Milzīgais jauniešu bezdarbs, kurš daudziet Eiropas dienvidos pārsniedz pat šokējošos 50% un laupa jauniešu nākotnes perspektīvas. Taču vai zinājāt, ka ķīniešu valodā vārds krīze sastāv no diviem hieroglifiem. Viens apzīmē bīstamību, otrs – labvēlīgu iespēju. Mēs dosimies ciemos pie jauniešiem citu vietu, kuri atraduši vai arī meklē savu iespēju Eiropā. Pirmā pietur vieta Kopenhāgenā Dānijā, kur mēs satiekam viduskolnieci Matildi Haugordu Bosenu. Viņai ir 19 gadi un Dāņu zaļo partijas alternatīvu valdes loceklas amati ieraksts CV. I've been politically active since I was 14, where I wrote uh, debate pieces for the biggest uh, newspaper in Denmark. And, uh, well, my parents always told me to have an opinion about everything. And then I've always, because my parents always been really interested in climate changes, it's always been something in my head. And then uh, one day, uh, Uffe Elbeck, who is the founder of the alternative, he launched this uh, political party and I was just like, I saw the program, the political program, and I was just like, yes, it's what I've been waiting for. And um, I got into it and in the beginning I was just a volunteer who made sandwiches for the people who were talking and I like said to myself I want to be politically active because this is where I can make, be, make a change. And then this uh, a member of the former board she called me and said, why don't you run for a central board? And I was like, no, I'm 19 years old. Central board is people who is like uh, from Mad Men, drinking whiskey and being really like secret and they don't really do anything. They just smoke cigars and that kind of stuff. Uh, but then, well, a lot of people were telling me it would be so cool if you ran, so I did. Matilde iestājas par jaunas politiskās kultūras ieviešanu visā valstī, kur politiķi mazāk aizrautos ar pretinieku nomelnošanu, bet vairāk pievārstos patieso problēmu risināšanai. We have six rules that when we go to into debate, when we go out and make our politics, we have to follow these six rules. And these six rules are uh, we will always listen uh, to our opponents. We will also always when we uh, launch something say this is the good things about this uh, law we want to make and this is the bad things about the law we make. We want to be more honest. We want to have more transparency into the laws. In the last couple of years there have been some rather um, controversial decisions made in the parliament where I think, and me I, as personally as well, have felt that there is something you're not telling us, dear politicians, why are you doing this? And we sold a part of the Danish Energy Society to uh, Goldman Sachs, which is, is this bank in the States who, who maybe, maybe not is a Someone says he's a bad guy, but the Danish people cannot be told, well, were there any offers? Why did we choose? Why did the uh, finance minister at the time choose to uh, sell it to Goldman Sachs? And then there was also something that he sold it a little bit too cheap and all that kind of stuff. And it's something that the Danish people cannot be told because, well, he can just say, I don't want to tell you that. I don't think, uh, I, I even think that he said that it was too difficult for us to understand. And I just think that this created this kind of way where people don't trust the politicians. And it's really, really, it's a big problem when you don't trust politicians because you then you don't really care about politics. And I mean, then the politicians could do whatever they want. Runājot par Eiropas savienību kā tādu, Matilda uzskata, ka tā ir labi iespēja mainīt lietu kārtību. Ņemot vērā pašreiz notiekošo biedējošākais, kas viņas prāt var notikt, ir visas sistēmas sabrukums. I am scared of this scenario and I really think that, uh, well, personally I would do a lot not to get there and I think that everybody should just be aware. I mean, okay, yeah, you're burning the EU flag, okay, you're frustrated about something and I think there is uh, 50% that the politicians are not doing enough to see this frustration and listen to this frustration. But I think also the other 50% is the people, well, you also need to do something else than just burning a flag. I think that's actually, uh, People are in the right to demonstrate. People are in the right to do what they want. But I think you should sometimes you should speak up instead of burning or throwing bricks. Uh, but yeah, I think that right now with the uh, Greece crisis, economic crisis, and uh, the refugee crisis, and we don't. It's like the whole. I have this picture of the European Union, all the members just standing down there looking at each other, like, what are we supposed to do? Um, it's a really, really big crisis for the EU and uh, for the whole system. yeah, for the whole system right now. And of course, we're in a really fragile state. And I don't think we have been in this state since maybe never. Uh, but I just, 
I just personally really have faith that we will solve this. Politiski aktīvs ir arī Andreas Veidingers, kurš darbojas Dānijas konservatīvā stautas partijas jaunatnes organizācijā Jaunie Dāņu konservatīvisti. I have a big trust in the government and the the whole legal system and everything there is in Denmark. Actually, I think that's that's really something you you learn in Denmark that we have a higher trust to the EU than anybody I think also to our own government. Andreas ir uzņēmējs un uzņēmējs valstī, kurā jāmaksā vieni no augstākajiem nodokļiem pasaulē. Kā tas ietekmē uzņēmēja darbību, to jautājam Andreasam. In Denmark we have high salaries, for example. So if I want to go out and earn some some cash, then I could just get a job, and get maybe 30,000 per month Danish crowns or something like that. If I'm an entrepreneur, it's high risk and uh, I can work hard for two years and maybe then I'll get some money. But it can also just be that it won't work and then I'm stuck. So it's actually a, a cost-benefit analysis and I guess it's also in that way in many other countries. On the other hand side, we have a very high um, social security and uh, possibilities if I uh, fail in my uh, in my attempt to be an entrepreneur then I get a high uh, salary or what you can call it from the state government so that's also gives some security Andreas ir atrads dezgan interesantu uzņēmēju darbības veidu kas apliecina ka labas idejas ir mums visapkārt tas ir tikai jāpaman It is a company a tutoring company where I collect the best university students in Denmark to teach uh, uh, teach students on a high school or elementary school level uh, to get better. Uh, we have, uh, I would say, uh, many issues in the Danish school system. Of course, it's not the worst in the world, but it's uh, it's decreasing in, in level, and I wanted to do something about that, uh, and, and I did. To Kopenhāgenes dodamies uz Sofiju, kur tiekamies ar Ludmilu Ilievu un Venceslavu Josifovu. Viņi ir ielu mākslinieki, kuriem zināmā mērā arī ir savs uzņēmums – grafīti apvienība – All for One Ideas. We were just kids and it was something like that uh, kids are around us uh, was interested in. We've tried it and uh, we like it, so here we are, 15 years later. From idea we are making something like brainstorming, then we are starting to, to make sketches. We collect all the sketches at one place, we see what idea fits the best for three of us, for all of us. And then we are making one sketch and then we are coming to the wall and start painting. We are really interested in nature, so that's what we paint. We would prefer to make eagle, for example, not to write my name. But the one that we love doesn't exclude the other thing. We also love uh, bombing, tax, throw up, so everything. Apvienības darbos ir iekļauti sociāli vēstījumi ar aicinājumu cilvēkiem kļūt apzinātākiem attiecībās ar apkārtējo vidi. To spilgt attai no sienas glezdojums, kas atrodas gluži vai pašā Sofijas centrā uz skolas sienas. It's part of a big project of Bulgaria Society for Protecting the Birds. We work with them really, really good. They have uh, this big project Safe Raptors about the eagle in Bulgaria. They asked us to paint something big, something beautiful and it's a really good way to show the people what we have in our minds, what we think they miss in our life. So when we're trying to, to paint something, for example, endangered uh, species, we are trying to show them that here in Bulgaria or even in, uh, in Sofia we have that kind of bird or something like this. Viens šāds sienas gleznojums top aptuveni piecās līdz sešās dienās, izmantojot akrilu krāsas un pūšamos krāsu balonus. Tomēr sienu gleznojumi nav vienīgais veids, kā apvienības mākslinieki sevi izpauž. Pavisam nesen All for One Ideas atklāja savu darbu izstādi – once and for all. We paint, we draw, no matter what kind of media. We draw digitally, we draw with uh, acrylic paint, oils, uh, pencil, spray can. That's what we do and what we love to do. No grafiti mākslas Sofijā pie fotogrāfijas Valdija Osta, kas ir pazīstams atpūtas galamērķis kā Romas pāvestiem, tā arī tiem, kurus aizrauj ziemas sporta veidi. Lai gan tas ir mazākais autonomais reģions Itālijā, tas var lepoties ar alpu augstākajām virsotnēm. 
Valdostānieši sevi dēvē par kalnu cilvēkiem. Kalni ir daļa no viņu identitātes, kuru savos darbos pēta fotogrāfs Alessio Dzemots. Mountain is a way of living. Mountain makes a specific way of living because of natural characteristics and because mountains force you to act, to think maybe also in a different way. There is no doubt. Mountains are forming identity of people. I think it, it's very interesting to study mountain from a cultural point of view, uh, sociological, anthropological. Alessio darbojas apvienībā Frame Division, kas popularizē vizuālo mākslu valdē ostā. Viņa apmāca jauniešus fotogrāfijā un kino mākslā, organizē pasākumus un paši producē filmas. Our purpose is to make culture in a large sense, increase the culture of the knowledge of contemporary cinema and photography. We all choose to be here, to live here. This is where we are born, so it's here that we choose to work. Viens no apjomīgākajiem Lesio fotogrāfijas projektiem ir Lovako il Vuto. Ar šo vārdu vietēji iedzīvotāji apzīmē neapdzīvotu vietu. Fotogrāfiju sērija tapusi kopā ar antropoloģi Valentīnu Manelu. My project uh, tried to uh, analyze this, this concept, why people today are still calling landscape as empty. It's never empty, it's always something. I produce a landscape where you can find always a repetition. My project are trying to tell a story about mountain in a sort of different way, not a common imagery, not the great peak or the extreme sport, but everyday mountain, everyday life. Par piederību programmēšanas pasaulē pilnīgi ir pārliecināts Puks Mērburgs. Viņu satiekam Delftā, kas ir viena no sanākajām pilsētām Nīderlandē. Puks sācis apgūt programmēšanu piecu gadu vecumā. I have created approximately 14 apps. Of course, I make a lot of small apps and games, just experiments. The most exciting thing is the puzzling, that you have this problem and you need to tackle it. So you code a solution. So you make a solution in code and test it out and it works and it's just exciting. First few apps I made were a were called a table trainer and it was an app to train your multiplication tables like two times four, seven times six, etc. And I made it because I had uh, issues with those multiplication tables myself. There's a few projects that I switched between. One of these is a newer like full game for computers. Another one is also a few of these projects like um, figuring out how stuff works and then making my own way of communicating to it. For example, smartwatches. Currently this, this whole communication between smartwatch and your phone is closed and no one has pretty much talked about it. So I'm going to figure out how it works. Programmation Space Books atjautīgi izmanto arī skolā. Viņš kopā ar draugiem gribēja uzspēlēt Twisteru, tomēr tā sauktais veiksmes rads bija salūzis. Puka zināšana šeit lieti noderēja. I started just making a small solution uh, in code. Like a small, uh, small web page that just shows a random color and left foot, right foot, left hand, right hand. And you could just re refresh the page and get another random choice. With programming you can make a lot of stuff like the smartwatches all run code and cameras run code. Pretty much everything that is a little bit smart also already runs code. So there's a lot of possibilities for programming. Nākamā stāsta varonis ir Denis Tānis Kuruš. Pievērsās uzņēmēja darbībai jau 15 gadu vecumā. Pirms gada viņš meties jaunā pārgalvīga avantūrā, izveidojot startupu Dash Mode. 450 tūkstoši eiro sēklas finansējuma vizuālā satura datubāzes izveidē investējas biznesa eņģelis. Dash Mode is a, is a search platform, an aggregated search platform, uh, powered by advanced technology to give you as fast as possible the, the content that you are looking for. So on average, uh, for example, on, uh, it takes about 45 minutes to find one singular image. So everyone in this industry or every publisher has this problem of finding the right image. Uh, and if we can reduce the time significantly, uh, then it allows for, for people to have more creativity. 
Pašreiz ir izstrādāta Dashmode beta versija, kuru jau tagad lieto aptuveni 10 tūkstoši lietotāji. Iespējams, Amsterdamā radītais Dashmode var izrādīties labāks un vieglāks vizuālo materiālu meklēšanas Rīgas par iecienīto Google. We have partnerships with these parties which have beautiful content, so, so images or video. We allow them to be on our platform basically. Google doesn't have this content, so our database is much larger than Google's and also from a much higher quality. No Alpkalniem Itālijā līdz Nīderlandes līdzenumiem. Satiekot jaunus, radošus un apņēmības pilnus cilvēkus, saproti, ka drūmajam krīzes mākonim ir arī sava zelta maliņa. Tie ir cilvēki, kas ar savu apņēmību un idejām veido jaunu Eiropu. Tā ir Eiropas jaunā paudze.